I always had a pretty high pain tolerance, but according to doctors, I actually have a dangerously high pain threshold, um, it, which actually is a detrimental thing. Um, when I did break my foot in Japan, I basically just toughed through it and said, oh, it'll be fine, don't worry about it. My management tried to send me to a doctor's and I told them, I'm fine, I'm fine, it's just bruising, because I was fairly certain I had broken my foot and I didn't want to be told not to wrestle. My first really bad concussion was in Japan. Um, I was wrestling in Fukushima and I took a high clothesline and I have no memory after the match for quite a while and my memory before that point in the match is pretty blurry as well. Uh, it was a really scary moment actually, um, waking up on a floor covered in jackets and not knowing what the hell happened and having people tell you that you were talking but completely out of it. And I had to wrestle the next day in uh, Sendai and apparently I'd said to the girls when they asked me if I'd be okay to wrestle the next day, I looked at them really confused and said, I'm wrestling tomorrow? This is Kelly Skater, a professional wrestler from Bacchus Marsh, Victoria. I began trailing Kelly a few weeks ago and followed her around from training to her first match back in Australia since returning from Japan. Nothing could prepare me for the shift in perception I would go through. So uh, usually I work out to kind of, I guess, keep in shape for wrestling because you have to throw people around and the last thing you can do is drop people on the head. So I work out in my own home because I, I find it like, I guess, more peaceful. I don't like sharing the gym, too many people in the way and they tend to look at girls like, what are you doing in the gym? I've always been a wrestling fan, always enjoyed the entertainment it brought me, but the women's competition was something I'd not taken seriously enough. When I was growing up, it was considered a sideshow, eye candy before the real main event had even started. So I decided to learn about what a female wrestler goes through and the amount of training they perform every week of their career. Also began to realise how difficult it was when Kelly broke into the industry. Uh, female wrestling was a lot smaller when I first started and it wasn't particularly taken very seriously. Um, I guess the women were kind of viewed as a joke a lot of the time and I, people had to work pretty hard to get noticed, but at that stage, most of the wrestlers were quite young. Even Madison had only been around a few years. Um, all the top girls that had now started were starting around the same time I did, maybe a year later. So it was really hard to fight to gain respect and I, to, I guess be viewed as actual wrestlers. Another part of wrestling is you've got to make sure you actually look good in spandex as well. So it's important to work out, because if you don't do that, you tend to look a bit flabby. Kelly trains just as much as any male wrestler would. Doing Muay Thai four times a week, in addition to doing weights, means she's constantly moving and on the go. Taking into the fact she does this and also has to wrestle and put her body on the line week in, week out is impressive enough. We're even taking into account the travelling between events and countries. Kelly began her career in 2007 and since then has competed all over the world in countries such as Japan, America and Canada. She found great success as part of the Shima promotion in Japan and has held numerous championships. One local promotion that supports Kelly and other female performers is Melbourne City Wrestling. We started Melbourne City Wrestling in late 2010 because we felt that Melbourne did not have a professional wrestling organisation that it could be proud of. Uh, since then, we found our shows going from strength to strength, and the girls have been a huge part of that. Uh, girls like Kelly Skater uh, and everyone else who have just been able to shine a light on what we do through the work that they do overseas as well, which means that, yeah, it's, they're an integral part of what we do. And it's, at the moment, it's one of those things where we might have one girls match on a show, but there's no reason why we shouldn't have two, maybe even three. We think that women's wrestling is of an increasing importance for what we do. Uh, especially in terms of the movement everywhere, in terms of women in sports and all that sort of thing. Wrestling is very much the same. It mirrors society a lot more than what people would probably believe. Uh, so it makes sense for us to feature the women in a, in a greater spotlight because in many cases they are just as good as the men. Um, and in terms of women who have gone on elsewhere on to bigger and better things overseas, the number, uh, the number of girls from Australia who are doing that actually far outnumbers the number of the guys who are doing it. Making her return after a tour of Japan, Kelly Skater! <laughs> Kelly!
Harley Skater coming into the arena of the ring, making her way back into MCW's. One of the best women's wrestlers in Australia. And you know, tonight, Kellyanne wants to make, make a name for herself. Goodness, so fast. So I went along to my first ever independent wrestling event at MCW to watch Kelly perform. I'd never seen her wrestle before or in character. And as soon as she went through that curtain, she changed into an athlete, a performer. I was amazed because her skills were just as good, if not better, than the men in the previous matches before. The skill and professionalism was amazing, and the entire room was captivated and invested in her struggle. During the match, it dawned on me the oversight I and others had made. They may look good in wrestling clothes, they may be female entertainers, but they are athletes. This sentiment being shared by male wrestlers too, who also remember how things used to be growing up, as well as how they weren't looked on as favourably as the men. That not, wasn't not so much very fondly, but it was, they're not as good. And then it took a lot of them going overseas, there was Madison Eagles, Kelly Skater, Shaz McKenzie, they were all going overseas a lot, you know. And then we had, you know, there was um, Casey Cassidy and Jesse McKay got signed to WWE and it was like, hey, our women's division's pretty good. I think I would have been six and I went to the video shop to rent a wrestling DVD and it had Sable take her shirt off with no bra on except for some paint. And my parents were like, that's it, you ain't watching this anymore. And I had to beg and beg and beg for them to let me watch it again. As opposed to now, where you've got awesome wrestlers, like if you watch Victoria and Mickey James wrestle in a cage match, like that's unreal. So um, the level of wrestling's gone up. They're actual wrestlers now. They're looked at as athletes, as opposed to, oh, there's some eye candy for the teenagers in the crowd to look at so they come back and buy a calendar. People are coming to watch women now, and we have a lot of female fans coming now, and they can obviously make that connection with the women a lot more than they can with the men because they can relate. So the fact that the women's division has built, and there's like a lot of them coming through, and a lot of them from interstate too, like people are wanting to come through and wanting to come wrestle here. It's good to see that there's so many female fans being inspired by the good female talent we have. Oh, oh Kelly skated in the corner. We know what's coming. We know what, we know what this is. Cannonball. Oh. And Kelly Skater has been left in pieces. Here's a cover. And that is it. Kelly surprisingly did not view the sexualization of women's wrestling as a bad thing, but rather separate to what she does but does have a specific problem with over-enthusiastic fans as a result. I have no problem with the sexy aspect of wrestling because it is an entertainment industry. There is a place for your, um, your valets who are all sex appeal. There's a place for your sex appeal wrestlers. But it's very different from what I do as a women's wrestler. I've had some creepy fans. Yeah, there's definitely been some creepy fans. The ones that message you constantly, stuff like, um, can I buy your used shoes and socks? Can you piggyback me, find them, carry me? I can beat you up. And they're the worst, the ones that, I can beat you up, I beat up women all the time. <laughs> what are you doing? You're insane. So I'll tell them if I'm a professional, I don't fight outside of professional settings. Oh, you're afraid to fight me because you're a woman. And then I've had the ones that thought it was appropriate to follow my then at the time underage sister on Facebook and ask her questions about me which really, really irritated me and made me basically cull my Facebook and then start a different Facebook for wrestling. Women's wrestling to me is different to how I once viewed it. What Kelly does is different than I could have fully understood before this process started. My name is Stephen Barnes and I'm now a female wrestling fan and I have high hopes for what the profession can become, as does Kelly. I think people starting to realise, oh, girls can play traditionally men's sports really well. So it's really cool. I think it's going to be interesting to watch the next few years how it does explode and get a lot bigger.